Okay, hello and welcome everyone to another Painting Leaf streaming with Be Child Creatives. Uh, so every Monday I will be with you in the next following hour. Uh, my name is Ruben Martinez and as you could see I will be painting this, this miniature from Black Sun and Broken Top Kickstarter which is already leaf. Uh, you could check it. Uh, this miniature and others uh, from, as you could guess, from the Henson's Labyrinth and Dark Crystal films. So if you saw the, the, the films in, in your childhood, uh, you will love it, this stuff, as we, we do. So we are happy to, to collaborate with our friends making these, these paint jobs and these streams for you. So I'm waiting more people will come. Hola, <laughs> bienvenidos. <laughs> sí, llegas a tiempo. <laughs> De hecho, de los más puntuales. <risa> bueno, pues eh, lo que comentaba un poco en inglés, eh, ya sabéis que intentaré hacer un poco el streaming en, en inglés y en español, así, pues bueno, que nos podamos entender y chatear todos lo más posible. <risa> así que, pues bueno, eh, ya si habéis estado siguiendo los streaming de otros días, eh, pues eh, cada lunes, miércoles y viernes estamos haciendo estos streamings de pintura eh, sobre estas miniaturas que han lanzado el Kickstarter Black Sun, Black Sun y, y Broken Top y bueno, pues no, no necesitan mucha presentación porque eh, como podéis ver, eh, esta miniatura en concreto es el Scroll Keeper eh, de la película El Cristal Oscuro y, y bueno, pues hay bastantes más personajes de esta película y de dentro del laberinto en este Kickstarter eh, Para los que no os conozcáis el, el Kickstarter y estas figuras vamos a echarle un vistacillo rápidamente que eh, Siempre hay alguno que llega de nuevo y dice, ¿pero qué es esto? ¿Cómo, cómo mola? <ríe> Entonces, pues mira, vamos a echar un vistacillo. Eh, let me change the screen in order to show you what I'm talking about. Mm, the Kickstarter. And this is the Kickstarter what I'm talking about with the miniatures from Jim Henson's films Labyrinth and The Dark Crystal so as you could see only 12 days left in order to finish so if you are interested in these beautiful models don't don't miss the chance to to get those ones Probably you will recognize all the characters. I will scroll down because all the days I start from the beginning, of course, but there is amazing stuff in the lower part. Those are very nice in order to make some kind of diorama <laughs> those are from Joaquin Palacios and more talented uh, many more sculptors are participating in, in this Kickstarter as well you could see so this <coughs> is in summary the stuff that you will find inside this kickstarter i i like to remember that only 12 days left to go 
So, hurry up. Some people ask me about the, the glasses of this model that I'm painting and this is the answer for you. Uh, these glasses are made in transparent resin so I think it's better to paint the miniature without the glasses and uh, when everything is painted you find more easy to, to, to glue these, these glasses and paint this part in order to make a more clean job okay so <clears throat> let's go again with the table the painting table so hello Christophe welcome <laughs> Nice to see you. <clears throat> so uh, I'm looking for your comments and so if you want to, to ask something about the painting process, about the kick started, uh, about the model itself or whatever you want, uh, do just uh, search and I be reading, reading your comments in order to answer them. And we hope, I hope that we spend a nice evening painting together and chatting in order to, to make this isolation a little bit more enjoyable. <laughs> I think this is a very good thing to, to stay at home painting or making things that you like in order to, to, to be busy. And I hope that this encourages you to, to take your brushes, your miniatures, and why not these those ones when when you have at home you have some clues to 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 start painting them. So uh, stay tuned for more tutorials about these miniatures because we will be uploading. Uh, until the end of the Kickstarter more videos to our Yacha channel so if you like this stuff please like and subscribe in order to support us and in this way we could do more things for you okay so <clears throat> in the previous uh, streaming uh, I was painting the the face so almost is is not uh, finished at all because in one hour I don't have enough time to to make some refinement and probably you will be bored. <laughs> uh, hola Alberto, bienvenido. So uh, in this live streaming I will uh, jump to another part of the miniature and I will I will paint some clothes and and I will be painting different textures uh, I think this is very very interesting thing for for this live streaming because sometimes when you have a miniature like this that seems everything uh, brown because I'm I'm taking the reference from from the film and I'm adding more color than in the film, but that, but at the end all the clothes are brown, are cream, creamy colors, and this kind of thing, you know. And sometimes when you have this kind of of scheme, color scheme, uh, you will find difficulties in order to to resolve and to make uh, something something interesting for the viewer. Uh, okay, <clears throat> most of the clothes are uh, in a green tone, but this don't mean that you need to paint everything in the same tone and with the same value. So you need to make some variety in, in your painting. ¿Qué tal Israel? <laughs> Muy buenas tardes. <coughs> bueno, ya vamos siendo más, así que espero que en los siguientes minutos ya se, se anime esto un poquillo. Los lunes siempre son días duros para todos, supongo. <risa> ok, bueno, el viernes está ya más cerca, no os preocupéis. 
Okay, so I will be making this part of the cloth near to, to the head because I want to focus the, the attention in, in this part, in, in the, I think, the main part of the, of the miniature. So I'll try to make uh, something with more contrast and value than in other parts. Uh, keep in mind that this part that you could see here, okay, these parts are um, already started. They are not finished. I, I all, only did a quick sketch in order to, to advance the miniature and uh, see as much as I can uh, near to uh, a finished state, but it's already in, in a 60% something like that. Yeah. Sí, Alberto. Eh, este, esto es como una pieza de cuero. Eh, entonces voy, voy a hacerlo con una texturita de cuero. Eh, vais a ver que también es muy fácil. Y bueno, pues estas dos telas que lleva aquí en el collarín, bueno, eso ya es un poco tipo tela como la que lleva un poco aquí en la manga. Así que bueno, vamos a ver esas diferencias entre estas telas y texturas <coughs> y vais a ver que también es muy fácil de, de lidiar con estas cosas ok <coughs> ya sabéis que si tenéis alguna pregunta o de lo que sea pues, pues para eso estoy aquí también para hablar con vosotros y contestaros lo que queráis Entonces, vamos a empezar por el collarín. Ok, uh, I'll start with the neck uh, cloth, the part of the, the neck with this, with this cloth. I don't know the name, ok. Uh, and I'll start, uh, as I saw in the reference, sorry, I'll see, I, I saw that this part of the cloth and this other part are slightly different pieces of, of cloth. So I'll make different variations in, in, the, in the tone. So I will start with a base tone. Mm, una pregunta bastante, bastante interesante, Alberto. <coughs> Eh, bueno, eh, la forma de hacer un esquema de color eh, hay muchísimas maneras. Eh, en este caso concreto <coughs> no es un esquema muy vistoso porque, como estaba comentando, es verdad que, que es todo como ropa muy marrón, muy, muy crema, muy, muy blanco roto. Eh, lo, casi lo único que tiene de color es un poco lo que es la piel, que es de un azul y el cual también le he añadido naranja, si has visto los streamings de otros días, un poco para que no sea un azul, eh, por decirlo así, un azul pitufo, ¿no? Entonces, eh, al final lo de los esquemas de color casi que te viene dado en este caso, por ejemplo, en la referencia. Eh, ahora, es verdad que si, por ejemplo, os voy a mostrar la referencia que, que más o menos he cogido pero no es tanto como para un esquema de color, sino es como para ver un poco de, de más o menos qué es cada parte, de qué es cada color, porque si te fijas, los colores son muy apagados en general. Entonces, le voy a intentar dar un poco más de, de, de chicha, eh, saturando algunos colores, dándole más, valo, más valor en algunas partes, para hacer un contraste más llamativo, eh, sobre todo en las partes cercanas a la cara. Y luego, pues que un poco tenga más variedad cromática que lo que es la foto, porque esto si no se nos va a quedar muy gris. Ok, as you see, sorry, ok, yeah, this is the, one of the reference that I have uh, in order to paint the miniature, but this only is a reference in order to see uh, which material is each part, ok? I know not trying to, to make something uh, very similar to this. I'm uh, changing the colors, the saturation, the values, 
in order to make something more interesting for, for the viewer, okay? So, in, in my miniature, as you, as you, as you see, uh, I'm making the, the, the skin so much saturated that in the reference. And for these parts of clothes, I'll make not something much saturated, but I, I'll introduce some variations in the hue. Okay, so in the, in the green parts, like these ones, I will make one thing. This will be a creamy color, okay, but more warmer, warmer than this other one that is uh, already other creamy color. Let me explain you, okay? Eh, sí, Isra, eh, desde el principio voy a, voy a estar trabajando un poco la textura eh, y luego al final, si, si quiero, también puedo añadirle suciedad pero eh, no tiene sentido que lo pinte mmm, todo muy 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 limpio y luego tener que ensuciarlo muy muy mucho entonces, desde el principio voy a intentar eh, ya trabajar un poco esas texturas que, que marcan también un poco el, el desgaste de, de, de esas telas, ¿vale? Ok, I will mm, make a base color for mm, this part, because I already have one uh, base color applied, but it's too dark and has no mm, hue, no tonality at all. Ok, so, I'll take one brown, for example, this one is a uh, green, is brown, ok, and for one part, I will add this brown is red, okay? And for other parts, I have here some blue. Remember, I added already. <clears throat> okay, let me add a little bit of orange in my palette because uh, I love to play all the time with similar colors in, in the miniature. So, if you remember in the face, I was using this blue mix it, mix it with other colors like yellows, whites and so on. And I will, was playing with uh, orange as well in the part of the nose, some tones here in the tips. Uh, it is C. So, making this uh, reduces palette, I'll uh, make more ambience in my miniature. This is something related with the uh, color harmony that Alberto is asking about a few moments ago. So, if you play with a limited palette, you will achieve a more ambience in your miniature, more harmonious colors, okay? So, this is one trick that you could use in, in your in your scans. Okay, so I will mix two base colors. One for the this part, which is warmer than this other one. Okay. So let me This is my warmer base tone, okay? Probably I need to darken a little bit with a touch of blue. Okay, too much blue. So I'm correcting the mix and a little bit of this one, okay. And as you could see, I get a base dark color, brownish tone, and cool. Okay, so this is okay because this is just what I wanted. And for the colder parts, 
I'll make something similar with the same colors but adding more blue and that's all I'm using the same colors okay but now you'll see the difference between them okay a little bit of blue more and a little bit of red something like that they are similar similar colors but different temperatures and hues so I'm ready to start with the base coats okay as always uh, if I'm out of the camera sorry for that Good evening, Age of, of Sigmar. <laughs> you are in time. I'm just starting. <laughs> so, I will be making my first layer, which will be my shadows on these parts, okay? This bit of soft cloth. Okay, uh, I think is... By the way, is the image and the sound, everything is okay for you? If don't, just tell me and I could make some changes. Okay, a quick base coat for this part. I need to cover this other part only a, a little bit because I will be focused on the main view for you in order to save some time for this streaming okay okay and now I will be applying the other okay i miss the other part i will be applying this other color for these parts and i will be adding a little bit of blue okay in order to make more colder see the difference And this is the good point about sketching. You could create any time as you want. Okay, sorry if sometimes I put the miniature in weird positions and probably out of the camera. But trust me, it's a huge miniature which needs to be managed sometimes in these positions in order to reach comfortably to all the places it's important to to be comfortable painting the miniature in order to achieve more precision okay i miss to to paint this other part that correspond to something like that so I cover with a warmer tone like this and okay I have here my best colors so you you will start to see the differentiation about the the clothes okay warmer colder water warmer okay I will be applying 
a little bit of high dryer. Sorry for the noise. Silmar said, uh, is that cabinet behind your background? Sorry, I could just roll. Okay. Um, let me let me check because I'm not sure what are are you asking for because I don't know what is cabinet. <laughs> Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's behind me. <laughs> I don't have any any particular places to 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 put my my miniature. So yeah, you are right. The cabinet is behind me. <laughs> but there are some secrets inside, so I can't show you. At least at, the, at this moment. <laughs> okay, so now I'll start adding some light in these uh, clothes. Okay, so in order to add light to these creamy uh, clothes, uh, because they are tertiary colors, okay, some brownish tones, some grayer tones, I don't have in mind anything about. A saturation and something like that. <laughs> so I will be using um, simply this this tone of of um, is light flesh. Okay, um, for me is uh, uh, some kind of white. Okay, is uh, um, a color with a high value that when I add to my mixes, I increase the value of my mixes. So for this, for me, it's okay. Okay, so. You could use uh, similar colors like this one because this is a little bit warmer. So for me, for my mm, colder parts, uh, maybe I will be using something different, okay? <clears throat> probably something like that, but this probably will be too too cold, too bluish, okay? So I could mix. I will add to my palette this color for increasing my values and a little bit of this one to increasing or to to not increase to to make a uh, more colder my my lights okay something like that of course you could add blue and just that okay so for my warmer parts, okay, I will be just mixing this color with my base tone, okay, something like that. I could correct the temperature, adding a little bit of of orange, okay. So here you are. Oh, sorry, I'm out of the camera. Sorry, so sorry for that. Uh, just I mix it a little bit of this mm, light color with my previous mix, so I achieve a cream tone more light than before. Easy, and for the colder one, it's pretty the same. I will add this one to this one, and you could see a star how the agrier cold tone is forming in my palette okay so similar values different temperatures okay <clears throat> now i will start adding lights this is my first layer of lights 
Okay, I'm in the camera, I hope. Yeah. Okay, and now you start to see how the volumes are built on these particular wrinkles of the cloth. You need to keep this, this kind of things in mind when painting clothes because not all the clothes are similar. Some are very heavy clothes with no signing at all in, in the wrinkles and other clothes, not in this guy, but probably in other miniatures you will see that the clothes are more uh, light uh, than those ones and more reflective. You, you need to match the cloth that you are painting so this is needed to look for reference about what are you painting okay I'm trying to define the planes of light and leaving the previous layer for shadows. So this is why I'm drawing a little bit these lights. I'm sketching. This is sketching and you if you don't have if you didn't do these kind of things in your miniature, I suggest you that give it a try because it's not about to paint with plain colors in the miniature. You need to, to draw, to, to enhance the volumes a little bit in order to make them more visible for the viewer because the scale of the miniatures sometimes may make this kind of things so confused but if you increase the the contrast of the volumes the viewer will be will be identify perfectly the volumes of the miniature muy bien alberto <laughs> bueno yo creo que también es bastante visual y tampoco mi inglés es muy bueno, ¿eh? o sea que tampoco tampoco te preocupes, pero bueno, yo creo que, que más o menos lo podrás, lo podrás ver y, y, y entenderlo. Y si no, pues también en los comentarios después, las dudas que tengas, puedes preguntar perfectamente. Ok. With this color, I'm covering not all the surface, but because it's a very light color, the, 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 this part of the cloth, I'm covering almost everything, but leaving dark shadows in the recesses, okay? So, it will 
add a little touch of light in this part because you will see it in the main view okay and with this one the same okay now I will do the same in this other part okay but with the colder light in this way and I need to be careful with these little volumes of this piece of cloth because are formed but by a uh, a lot of these little volumes like mini cylinders so I need to define everything one by one and I think could be pretty tricky but the effect over the miniature will be nice So the trick to define this kind of mini cylinders is to make a light pretty in the center of the cylinder in this way. I'm trying to be quick in order to not boring you, <laughs> but I think that this kind of process which are more about definition and making brass strokes with care are a little bit more boring but at the end is the only way to make these volumes flow out of the miniature okay in this way Um now I okay I need to to define as well for these parts I will use this technique which is putting your brass in this direction you could paint all of these uh, little edges with one brush strokes because the sculpt are made for that and you'll see how I define these edges without painting the whole inside okay this is a nice trick that you could use many parts of the miniatures taking advantage of the 3D form of these miniatures I could make more light in this part because I'm focusing the, the light in this direction for the miniature in order to make more drama And remember, the contrast in miniatures are so nice. So try to to make as much as I, as you can. Okay, and I'm ready with this. You see? I forget to paint again 
the, the other piece of cloth this one but it will be short to make this kind of illumination here remember this piece of cloth I decided to make warmer like this one in order to make more uh, to, to have more variety in, in, the, in the miniature okay so you could see this part is warmer than this one and this is cold and again this is warm again so these kind of variations are very nice it's different to to make everything of the same color because you have the receipt of this color or something like that and paint everything in the same hues and tonality and temperature sometimes when you are adding lights I, I like to, to deal with my paint a little bit but uh, you will lose coverage power and sometimes you'll need to, to make two coats on some parts but this is okay you will work with gradients some kind of layering and you will work smooth and fast anyway okay so this was my first layer of lights and I will be adding another one with the same process for the mixes Hola Javier, ¿qué tal? Buenas tardes. <coughs> Hola Michel. <laughs> Good evening, Michael. Okay. So to start uh, adding more lights, the, the process is pretty the same, okay? I'll use this color and I will mix with my previous color but this time I will be making a little touch of the previous color only in the in the final lights okay so <clears throat> this is my tone right now you will see the difference between lights okay uh, now I think it's okay on the camera and for the colder one it's pretty the same this color will increase my value but uh, I keep the temperature cold okay I could add a little bit of this blue in order to make it colder a little bit something like that and okay I have my two light colors for these parts now <clears throat> I'll check the contrast that I achieve with this mix and correct but I think it's enough contrast for these parts because I think there, this this kind of clothes are not are not white. Are some kind cream color. I don't need to 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 reach to the white color at all. Okay. Maybe I could light lighter a little bit, but not too much. 
in this way. And with this color, I will try to reduce the surface that I previously, previously painted with my previous light. So each step that you are making layering in this way are more faster than the previous one because you don't need to paint the, the same surface. Each time will be a smaller surface. Sometimes, like this one, you need to focus a little bit the light here in this part in order to make more dramatic effect. Of course, the edges needs to be painted. And you could make this with the tip of the brass in this way, making dots and lines in order to suggest something um, warm and old. Okay. So in this way, you you see how I build the lights. And you don't need to be worried about the the smoothness of the gradients because as you could see I'm looking for some texture and I'm making short brass strokes, making lines, making dots. As I did with the face. If you didn't see the the video of previous steps over this miniature you could see in in the big child youtube channel and you will understand better the texturing effect that i am doing right now okay This is the trickiest part of the miniature because it's the higher one and it's very difficult to read comfortably with the brass. Okay. And, as you probably guessed, for the cold parts, oh, okay, as always, I almost forget. Thanks, Miguel, <laughs> for calling me magician. <laughs> I'm not a fan of, of Harry Potter, but Dumbledore, I think, was a, a cool character. Because I think he's pretty similar to Gandalf, something like that. <laughs> Okay, so 
This part is already painted with lights. And as I was talking about, uh, the same with this other one. Okay, I'm defining it, defining these little cylinders in this way. You need to be patent because this is an sketch and is okay to be more sketchy everything but if you in this step go smooth in some way later you will have less to 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 clean to the smooth okay I really find that a little bit with the same technique than before and in these parts only I need a little bit of light because I'm getting further from the main part of light which is this one it is in the main view I'm redirecting the light and making some drama on the miniature, okay? I'll make some texturing making in the perpendicular direction some lines, okay? In this way. Teeny, teeny lines in order to suggest some texture and make some variety in the cloth <clears throat> and I need to make some redefine in these parts in this way but only a little touch okay I'm seeing that I need a little bit of <laughs> Pues muchas gracias, Javier. Vamos a ver qué tal van los vídeos estos. Si os gustan, pues habrá que seguir haciéndolos. <risa> Nos alegramos mucho de que de que los disfrutéis y que estéis aquí con nosotros todos estos días, porque la verdad es que Es una forma de, también parece que no, pero de quedar con colegas. Lo de estar aquí con los streamings. <ríe> Terapias de grupo, que, que lo llamo yo. <ríe> bueno, y eso que ya parece que la cosa va mejorando, pero no hay que despistarse. Ok, I'm adding a final, final touch of light with almost the light color pure almost i mix it a little bit with the previous one but this will give me the definitive punch of light that i need on this creamy cloth but as you could see only in I applied this color in this part in order to make <clears throat> more contrast in in the main view. <clears throat> Venga, Rubén, os cojo la palabra. Pero bueno, es eso lo que comentaba un poco. Todavía nos queda cuarentena para para aburrir, así que Tranquilos que, que estaremos aquí con vosotros 
mientras dure y seguramente después. Para no perder las buenas costumbres. Okay, so this is my sketch for the cool parts, sorry, the warm parts, and for the warm parts is pretty the same, but I'm using the previous color, but with a little bit of blue in order to not make, not to paint the lights with the same color. Gracias, Javier. Pues sí, nos alegramos mucho que, que paséis buenos ratos con, con los vídeos estos, porque al final es verdad que, que los hacemos así un poco para que eso mismo, lo paséis bien, los disfrutéis, también veáis un poquito cómo hacemos las cosas, eh, si os puede también dar ideas, tanto mejor. Y bueno, pues disfrutar así un poco más de este hobby que, que nos gusta tanto a todos. La verdad que a veces puede ser un poco frustrante porque eh, siempre hemos empezado todos un poco con estas cosas, ¿no? De, pues yo no me quedan igual las, las minis que, que a otras personas y tal, que te fijas tú y los tienes de referentes, pero bueno... Eh, al final es verdad que lo bonito del hobby yo creo que es un poco... El, el proceso del aprendizaje, más que el pintar bien en tres días. Eh, de hecho, creo que todas las disciplinas artísticas, eh, al final es una, es una carrera de fondo y, y vamos, que no, no se puede nunca saber todo, eso está clarísimo. A mí me encanta la música y, y vamos, no, no vas a ver a ningún músico diciendo nunca en plan de yo ya toco mejor que, que nada entonces ya como que me pasa este juego no pues yo creo que con la pintura pasa pasa un poco lo mismo tienes que estar en, en constante búsqueda y, y experimentando aprendiendo haciendo cosas diferentes porque es que al final sino incluso también te aburres de hacer siempre lo mismo no entonces eso es también lo bonito es el, el arriesgar el que unas veces te sale otras que no pero las veces que no, ya también estás aprendiendo algo. Así que no tengáis miedo a la hora de pintar, porque la verdad es que estos bichos no muerden. Ok, so as you could see, I'm pretty finished this sketch, and now. I will be making some smoothing over those parts. This is why I may, I just did the contrast so high because I will lose some information now with with the with the eyebrows. Of course, you could uh, make this smoothing with the brass, but I think that is much uh, quickly with the with the eyebrows. So. Uh, in the previous streaming, I was cleaning the, the gradients of the face with the brush, so you could see there how many, how, how easy it is to make these kind of things with the brush. Um, and you maybe could make uh, some um, mixed, mixed technique with the brush and later with the brush to, to, um, to make um, other effects, because uh, the, the smooth ring is pretty the same with both tools, but uh, with the brush you could make more more uh, di different um, kinds of, of effects, like making huge, uh, different huge in, in the recesses, which with the eyebrows is pretty difficult. So. Uh, you need to, to experiment and try with different things. But probably I will try something like that here. Okay, so for uh, 
clean the transitions in my warmer parts I'll choose for example this color okay which is a brownish color okay it's pretty similar to the one of the base coat okay so I will add a little bit of this light color perfect so I will be uh, making the smooth ring with mm, the, a medium tone okay I could add a little bit of orange in, to increase the temperature and remember very diluted in order to not ruin my previous work and I'll try not to paint too much in the lights but paint in the middle tones and the shadows Sometimes it's difficult, but you don't need to be very strict with this kind of smoothing process because this is not my final step for this part. I will add more layers like I did right now of a sketch and later a smooth with the brush or the eyebrows, okay? So it's important to choose a good direction for uh, brushing these middle tones of the or these shadows and this is why I put my miniature in this direction. Okay. And I'm trying not to cover the, um, the colder parts, these ones, but if I uh, paint a little bit in, in this part, it's okay as well. So it's so uh, translucent, the, 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 this coat, that no matter is an additional reflection, another tone. Okay. Sí, eh, Rubén, eh, está, bueno, es un poco también la que te resulte más confortable a ti. Tirar con poca presión es verdad que, que parece que nos da más seguridad, ¿no? Como que es verdad que si tiramos con mucha presión, pues nos pueden salir esas desagradables patas de araña y bueno, ya sabemos que, que es horrible cuando pasa eso. Pero bueno, que al final es un poco con lo que tú estés más a gusto. Eh, yo tiro, eh, también es verdad que si tiras con muy poca presión el aire sale muy despacio y también el aerógrafo tiende, tiende a, a atascarse un poco más entonces al final hay que encontrar como un equilibrio entre lo flojito que necesites para que no te salgan eh, las patas de araña y estas cosas y tampoco que, que estés limpiando el aerógrafo cada dos por tres porque se te ha atascado ¿no? entonces eh, yo estoy tirando, creo que son como con dos... Eh, déjame ver. Dos bares. Sí, no llega a dos bares. Entonces, sobre, sobre esa, esa presión yo estoy cómodo. 
Es verdad que puedes tirar, ya te digo, si tiras con muy poquita presión, lo que sí te recomiendo es que pruebes alguna vez a tirar con más presión. En torno a esta que te digo yo, dos bares o algo así. Vas a ver que también la pintura parece que seca antes, lo cual, si tiras desde cierta distancia, lo cual también es bastante útil. Pero bueno, es, es cuestión de, de acostumbrarse a, a las presiones, pero por regla general, eh, ya te digo, si tiras muy flojito, prueba otras presiones un poquito más fuertes. Eh, ok. Uh, now for the cold, colder um, parts I will be using pretty the same uh, mix but I will add as you probably guess some blue not too much because I don't need blueies but with a little bit of blue I have this color okay that which is pretty the same which I have in my middle tones and because i was adding a little bit of blue my mix is still translucent okay and not covering too much so i apply this new mix in the same way that i did to the other part And oops, I'm out of the camera, sorry. And the same things happens that I explained before. If I <coughs> paint a little bit the adjacent uh, parts of the warmer tone, don't worry, because is the paint so translucent and <clears throat> you don't ruin anything. You will be adding more hues to your miniature. Okay? Okay, <clears throat> I'm out of the camera again, sorry, I don't know what is happening. <clears throat> eh, <clears throat> sí, Juan Carlos, eh, ah, no, Juan de Dios, perdón, eh, el regulador que tiene, esto también influye, si tú lo giras para un lado, sale más aire, y si lo giras para el otro... Eh, sale menos caudal entonces eh, eso para cuando quieras pintar algo muy finito ah vale <risa> javier madre mía <risa> ok I, i think that this is more or less the what a disaster <risa> i move the camera ok let me check because i have some delay in the image that I'm seeing, okay. <clears throat> I will be uh, here, I think it's better, okay. Here I think it's better. <laughs> Sorry for the inconveniences. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, I go to the technical department and they fix it the problem
Ok, so, um, sorry, uh, 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 Juan de Dios, eh, estabas preguntando que este um, cauda, el regulador también influye en el, ca, en el caudal que, con el que estás tirando. Efectivamente, porque esto es un regulador que te vale para aumentar el, el caudal de aire o cerrarlo, para pintar cosas muy finitas. Eh, pero yo la verdad es que no lo uso, lo dejo en un punto medio en un punto que ni sale tan poco como, como quiero, ni que tampoco me salga a presión que no pueda controlar, ¿no? Entonces, lo dejo en un punto medio para que sí que yo regulo la presión ya directamente con el, con el, de la aerogra con el del compresor, per perdón, con el manómetro. Es verdad que para alguna cosita muy rápida, igual si sí te, te viene bien el tocarlo con, con, la, con el regulador este, pero en principio... Eh, ya te digo que no, no hace falta que te vuelvas muy loco con el regulador ok so in this lower part of the warmer uh, cloth I was adding um, this color to, um, to increase the amount of shadow so this is a proof that uh, painting with one color out of the, of the place is ok sometimes Okay, so as you can see, uh, this part is pretty uh, sketched and uh, smoothed, but uh, this is not the final st stage for this part. So you need to make some refinement on on this clothes. Okay, so again, I will take previous mixes. Okay, so for example, this one is a previous light, and this time I don't need to to cover the surface perfect, perfectly with with this mix. So I'm diluting the mix way more in order to to make a very translucent paint. Not a very. I need some coverage. Okay, but you see, I'm painting. I'm tinting the, the surface, but is sewed some of the letters be, beneath the, the paint. It's different to paint straight to the bottle, okay? It's different. But if you paint uh, over, a, over an eyebrow with this uh, uh, dilution, uh, it will be difficult to... to to hide the the <clears throat> the gradient okay so you need to deal with a, a little bit more the paint okay you don't need to deal with to the endless uh, state but with a little bit of dilution you could add light now without the need of a smoothing and this could be my final light or you could make another stage of a smooth rim and later another stage of painting with the brush so at the end you could make your work with so much refination as you want My advice is to not overdo any part, okay? It's better to make some job in, in light and shadows and jump to another one in order to advance the miniature at the same time. This way you will have a couple a complete sense on the miniature every in, in every moment you know and I saw you to don't worry about to painting at just in parts okay because at the end you will be making the refinement and the definition 
a step and this is when you fix all of these mistakes okay and this way if you saw my previous live streaming I usually work most of the parts Okay, I think you get the idea. I'll bury my mix, adding more light in the final steps, like this, some light points. like this with little touches of this very light color, okay? Sorry, I'm highlighting teeny parts and this is when I hold my breath so I can't talk <laughs> too much. <laughs> so don't sigh, it's your turn, it's your turn to, to ask something. <laughs> As you can see now with this light color, very light color, I'm making the final touches of my light, so I need to be very precise. Okay, so this is the results over these kind of clothes. I could make some lining as well in the cold parts, but I think that this is what I want to show you for today so from now I'll try to to speed up a little bit the process of this guy because as I saw as I said before uh, the campaign is reaching to to the end and only 12 days more left in order to to finish so we love to show you this miniature finish before the end campaign so probably in the next live streaming of the next week you'll see some advances where these sketches and remember this week uh, will be with you David Arroba on Wednesday and Jaime de Carnica on Friday 
So we hope to see you again in their live streamings. And remember, they are painting other miniatures from the this Kickstarter. So uh, you could see different uh, characters, techniques and approaches for painting miniatures. So don't miss it. Okay, and of course, a little bit of highlight in the edges because the, this will define better the volumes. Okay, I will add a point, little points of light. Here, almost this pure color. And making dotting in the edges to suggest some weathering in this cloth. And I will be defining some of the holes in this side to increase the definition. And this is the, the funniest part, I think, because you could spend as many time as you want refining your work. And the more time you spend refining, more awesome will be the finish. But keep in mind that <laughs> you you don't need you don't have the all the time of the world so my suggestion again is to when you have these some parts in these steps with some lights on saddle you know uh, my advice is that you jump to another part in order to advance the miniature and see what is happening in other parts okay so when you see everything painted in the miniature you will have a better uh, overall miniature of the the wall the, the wall miniature sorry for the redundation okay guys so i hope that you enjoyed the streaming uh, of today and uh, as i said before and uh, don't forget to take a look to the to the kickstarter in order to see uh, more of these wonderful characters uh, for you painters okay <clears throat> it's important to terminar las minis porque Al final, cuando terminas una, eso quiere decir que puedes ir a por otra. <risa> es, es verdad que lo, que lo que está bien a veces es cambiar. <risa> ok, so, thanks to, to everyone to, to be there another day again. 
And remember to be as well on Wednesday with David Arroba at the same hour and at the same time in the same place in, in the YouTube channel of Vital uh, Creatives. So if you like it, please like and subscribe to this channel. So thank you again to everyone and stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye.